Hi, my name is Susan Huey and I'm the Neurological Sales Consultant for Southwest Houston for Dynasplint and we're here at the American Occupational Therapy Association and just want to talk to you a little bit about neurological application of Dynasplint and what we do with the neurological application is that we work with children, adults, pediatrics and we do splinting that will help to stretch them while they sleep. So the whole idea is to be able to get a patient who has a lot of spasticity in tone to be able to gain range even after they discharge from therapy as well as while they're in therapy by having them stretch at night while they're relaxed and comfortable. We know that daily stretching programs really those aren't going to work long term because 23 and a half hours a day when they're not stretching they're going to be getting tighter. If we leave them in that position 23 and a half hours a day they're going to lose range over time. So the idea is that if at night they're in an extended position, especially with their fingers open, with their elbows straight, you're going to be able to gain range of motion at night while they're sleeping that versus the family having to stretch them to get them into something. If you think about it, getting them into a regular static splint or getting them into any other kind of splint, you're going to have to slowly stretch them out and it's going to hurt. It's going to take 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes sometimes if they're really tight to get them out to the position of getting them in a splint. That's a lot to ask the caregivers, it's a lot to ask nursing staff, depending on what setting you're in. If they're able to get into the splint in a flexed position, whether it be elbow flexion and the splint comes to them, or wrist flexion and you're able to get their hands nice and open and in the splint, then as they relax, the splint will do the stretching for you. So it's a lot more comfortable for the patient to be stretched slowly like that it's also better for the caregivers because they're able to get in it. When I'm stretching a patient as a therapist myself, I'm actually a physical therapist. I've worked with neurological patients for the last 11 years. One of the things that I struggled with was when you're going to be stretching them, you get them in the splint. If they're in a regular static splint and their tone kicks in, they're going to tighten up and they're going to crawl out of that splint. Even an elbow splint, they're going to twist or try to get out of it and push against something hard. With these splints, what you've got is when that tone kicks in, they have a tone moment of some kind, the splint will let them bend. Then as they relax, you can start stretching them again. And if you think about you as a therapist, if you're going to be stretching a patient with spasticity, you bring them out slowly. If they sneeze, cough, need to have some type of reaction, you wouldn't hold them out there. You would let them bend and then slowly let them go back out. It's exactly what the splint does. We purposely don't lock it out. We keep the tension this much, just a tiny bit, above their resting tone so that whenever they do relax, it will take them back to end range and keep a light stretch. So the whole idea of what we call the TURT principle, total end range time, is that we keep the patient at their end range with a light stretch for at least six to eight hours a day, preferably while they're resting and supported and sleeping. Then you're going to gain that range over time and maintain it. The other thing that's really important is that we follow the splints as long as they have them at no charge to anyone, which to me is a huge benefit, both cost effective and helpful for the patient. Most of our splints only last about six months, static splints and things like that. So then you're having to go back to the doctor and therapist to get a new splint after such a short time. Spasticity and tone isn't going to go away, whether it's cerebral palsy, strokes, head injuries, they're going to have that tone a long time. So having a Dynasplint rep who will come out to their homes, therapy clinics, whenever they need something adjusted, will come out and make those adjustments for the length of the time they have the splint. You're able to be much more cost effective in the fact that they need one splint, not one every six months. And you're able to keep them in the splint because there's not that lag of three to four months waiting to get into the therapy clinics, get the new splint, get it fabricated, and get them back in it. Because during time we're losing range of motion when they're not in the splints. So really overall it's a long-term solution for a long-term problem. You're able to get this patient a long-term solution for as long as they need it without having to go back into those services. So overall what you're looking at is something that stretches them while they sleep versus when we're stretching them in therapy they're going to be pulling against us which hurts. So doing it this way is going to be more comfortable for the patient, it's going to be effective long-term and you're going to be able to address their needs. 
As far as coverage with insurance and everything, it's covered by almost all insurances and you're able to get Medicare coverage as well. So really we, we're able to get the coverage we need to take care of the cost of the split. So long-term solution for our asbestos patients that will really make a difference in helping them maintain all the hard work that you therapists do and you families do to gain that uh, mobility. This is what we do to maintain it long-term without hurting the patient and making it more comfortable for everyone.